Hello everyone. Today we're talking about the electrical system of the aircraft. It's a topic that uh, is somewhat mysterious to, to pilots sometimes. And, and Doug, you and I have talked about the electrical system. You have a way to explain it in, in ways that do not require me to be a scientist or, or engineer. It just makes sense. That's right, Martin. I, uh, given check rides, you know, one of the things we have to talk about is the systems in the airplane and uh, electrical systems do seem to be somewhat confusing for pilots and I've run into pro professional pilots who struggle with the concept of how their electrical system works and so over the years you know I've uh, figured out a way to explain the electrical system that pilots uh, seem to uh, be able to better understand and that is by comparing the electrical system to a hydraulic system it's a lot easier to visualize oil moving in a pipe yes and and uh, whether it's a pump or an actuator but in reality um, the electrical system and the hydraulic system operate almost identically and so what I do is start with the uh, where's the electricity come from and uh, as an engineer how would you answer that question it's a power source like a battery or the alternator. Okay, so the alternator and the battery is where it comes from. But I was being more basic than that. Where does the fluid come from? In the hydraulic system, it comes out of a reservoir. Where does the motive flow in an electrical system come from? It's the electrons in the conductor. That's right. And they come out of, I've heard it described as the ether, right? Yeah. That's right. We pull them out of the atmosphere in some manner or form. But our motive flow in a hydraulic system is oil. And our motive flow in an electrical system are electrons. And, you know, Boeing builds electric airplanes. And uh, back in World War II, North American built hydraulic airplanes. And I would argue that one of the drivers behind an electric airplane over a, a uh, hydraulic airplane is that you never run out of hydraulic fluid. Mm -hmm. Because you can always make more. But so understanding that the motive flow in the hydraulic system is oil and the comparable in the electrical system is electrons, then we go to just exactly what you said. Our hydraulic pump is a alternator or generator, right? Right. And so we take oil or electrons and we pressurize them. Okay, so we all understand the concept of pressure. Well, in the electrical system, pressure is volts. Okay, so we got volts equals pressure. Okay, and so now we move uh, oil in the hydraulic system at a certain gallons per minute. We call that flow, right? Right. So in a in a uh, in electrical system we would call or in a hydraulic system we would call that gallons per minute. In the electrical system we call that amps. Yes. Okay. So now that we understand that the generator or the hydraulic pump make pressure or voltage and the amount of oil they move or electrons they move is gallons per minute or amperage. Current. Uh, current, that's, that's right, right yeah. which we measure in amperage. That's correct. Current is measured in amperage. I, I never thought of it that way. Current like the current in a river is how fast the water flows. Exactly. Yeah. That's an easy way to remember that. I'd never thought of that. Okay, so after the oil comes out of our hydraulic pump, usually we have some sort of a device that regulates the pressure. Pressure relief valve, a, uh, uh, it might be a, uh, a return, you know, unloader valve that returns oil back to the reservoir at low pressure. But uh, so we would call that in a, in a hydraulic system, we would call that a pressure regulator. And in the uh, electrical system, we would call it a voltage regulator. Sure. Now, very often in the hydraulic system, we have two regulating methods. One would be the normal system, which would be, like I said, an unloader valve or something that dumps low pressure fluid back to the reservoir. And then we have a higher setting that, uh, depressurize the system in case of an emergency and that'd be an emergency relief or overpressure relief valve. So in the electrical system the equivalent is obviously the voltage regulator 
And then in some cases, we have over voltage protection. After the pressure regulating system in either, or the voltage regulating system, our, our uh, energy has to go somewhere to be stored. People understand this pretty well in electricity. In electricity, we store our energy in a battery. Mm -hmm. In a hydraulic system, we store it in an accumulator, which is typically either a piston or a diaphragm with compressed gas or a spring on one side and motive uh, flow oil on the other side. And that does a lot of things. It takes the surges out of the hydraulic system and it uh, allows for the hydro the pump not have to cut not to have to cut in so often and cut out so often which again re reduces surging on the system and uh, in the case of the failure of our pump um, the accumulator can provide us with one or two applications of brakes might have enough capacity to put the gear down all right so uh, and then the battery does exactly the same thing the battery actually is probably a better accumulator because it has more capacity than a hydraulic accumulator, but it serves the same function. And then we come to controlling the flow uh, and, and utilizing it. So the electrical equivalent of a hydraulic valve would be a, a uh, switch. That's right. Electric switch. That's right. It diverts or interrupts or, or connects the motive flow to whatever it is that we want to have that does work. And then we run the, uh, the hydraulic fluid. If we open the valve, the hydraulic fluid either runs to a cylinder or a motor where it creates work. Uh -huh. And in the case of electricity, the motive flow electrons either go to a, a servo, a motor, a light bulb, whatever, and they create work. So if we think about electricity in the terms of hydraulics, it becomes very simple, and I think pilots can understand it. So it's great to sit here at the table and talk about how the system works, but when it really becomes important is when something goes wrong, when we have a problem. So one of the questions I would ask on a type rating where the level of knowledge is expected you know, to be higher is, if we look down, we're flying along in flight, and we look down in a single engine airplane at the volt, at the, uh, volt amp meter, and we see that the airplane has high volts and high amps. So that is the equivalent of high pressure and high flow. Uh -huh. What could cause that? Well, if I look at the analogy with the, uh, with the uh, fluid system, uh, there's too much pressure that nothing that is not stopped by anything so it results in more flow than we normally see so in the electrical system i would assume my voltage regulator is defective that that is exactly correct putting out too much pressure on the whole system that's right because if you have too much pressure you're failing to regulate that's really the only thing that can cause too much pressure right is a failure to regulate so we look immediately to the voltage regulator mm -hmm. Conversely, if we look down at our volts and amp meter, and we see that we have high flow, high current, high amperage, and low pressure, going back to the hydraulic analogy, what would we expect to find in a hydraulic system? So if low pressure creates high flow, then somehow I, I'm, I must, uh, I must not have the, the full circulation uh, with the consumers working, maybe maybe a short circuit. Well, or in a hydraulic system, we, a leak. A leak. That's right. Yeah. And so the electrical equivalent of a leak in a hydraulic system is a short circuit. The good news in a hydraulic system is you quickly run out of fluid. If you call that good news. <laughs> yeah. The problem in an electrical system is we continue to make more fluid, right? Mm -hmm. And so when this fluid electrons exit the system, when they're lost, what happens? Well, I'm not sure, but I mean, it heats up. It's it heat heats. Generated, yeah. That's right. And we have a continuous supply. We're never going to run out of fluid electrons. And so the heat just continues to increase. So 
in the case of a hydraulic system, if we have a leak, there's probably nothing we can do about it, and we run out of fluid, and that's the end of the day. Right. In an electrical system, if we have a leak or a short, it's going to continue to leak until we, as the pilot, take some action to eliminate the heat, uh, eliminate the leak, which will eliminate the heat. And so um, I think if we can equate the, the electrical system to the hydraulic system, pilots would have a lot better uh, ability to understand that. So again, the pump equals the generator slash alternator, okay? Mm -hmm. The pressure regulator equals the voltage regulator. The high pressure relief equals the over voltage protection. The accumulator, where the motive flow goes, equals the battery. The valve, can spell, equals the switch. The cylinder equals a motor or an actuator. Some electrical device. Some electrical device that does work. So these would be the component comparisons. And as we look at diagnosing, if we have uh, high pressure and high flow, we have High voltage. High voltage and high amperage. That's got to be a regulator. Almost has to be a regulator problem. Mm -hmm. And if we have low pressure and high flow, that equals low voltage and high flow, and that equals a leak, which equals a short. So if we think about electricity in the concept of hydraulics, I think it makes it a lot easier for a pilot to understand what's going on in their electrical system in their airplane and they can more accurately diagnose uh, what's going on when they have a problem. Yeah. The, the fluid is something we can see, we can feel it's water tackle, pressure on a hose that, that's and right. all of that makes more intuitive sense than thinking of electrons moving right. somewhere. So you know, I call this electrical, electricity 101 for pilots. Well, that's a really useful analogy here, and your pressure you know, of the fluid and movement of the fluid is something we can feel, we can see, and, and that I, I hope will help understand how electricity works. Doug, thank you for explaining it. And You're welcome. Hopefully it'll be helpful. I think so. See you all in the next video.